Hey bag makers, today I'm going to be talking about the teeny tiny tank, various fabrics that I've added to my stash, quilt binding books written by Ebony Love. I'll be demonstrating how to use a string to turn your handles right side out, and there's a great giveaway at the end. I'm Sarah Lawson from Sew Sweetness. Thanks so much for joining me for Social Sunday, my weekly sewing. Hey everybody, welcome to Social Sunday. Thanks so much for joining me live, or if you're making time during your week, thanks so much for watching the recording. I see Dawn's watching from Connecticut, Karen from Bloomington, Illinois, Terry's also watching, and Charlie from Connecticut. So um, again, welcome. Just a friendly reminder before I get started, just about everything that I talk about during Social Sunday are things that I've purchased myself, so these are not things that I'm getting paid to talk to you about but just cool things that I found that I'd like to share with you. And everything that I'm scheduled to talk about, I link to in the description. So if you're interested in finding out more about any of the notions, fabrics, books, or projects that I talk about during Social Sunday, just check that link in the description and you can find out more information there. So yesterday I was looking at my hair. I don't, um, because we're in the house all the time, before last week, I really wasn't doing much, um, wearing pajamas, um, I, I don't know, I wasn't putting in a really great effort to get ready every day, but I read something in the past week, um, something written by a psychologist of all these helpful bullet points, and one of the bullet points was um, you shouldn't dress for the social life that you have now, you should dress for the social life that you, social life that you would like to have. So. Um, I thought it would be a better example for my kids if I made a little bit of effort. And so first thing in the morning, I've been taking a shower, uh, putting my contact lenses in because I've just been wearing my glasses mostly, um, getting dressed in, um, you know, sometimes nice pajama pants, sometimes jeans, um, putting in a little more effort than I have been and I've been feeling a little bit better about that because of the effort but I noticed yesterday that my hair has been looking a little bit scraggly. I only get a trim every maybe two or three times a year and I think it was due for a trim. Obviously I can't get my hair cut right now by my hairstylist but I watched a video on YouTube on trimming your hair yourself and there there's a actually a, a great variety of different YouTube videos I found for different haircuts for doing it yourself and I I just wanted a really super simple trim so I watched the video trimmed my hair um, was pretty happy with it and I know you can't tell because it's up today but um, just trying to <laughs> do these little things to help myself feel a little bit better or more comfortable um, I just wanted to say thanks so much everyone for um, everyone out there working the essential jobs um, it's really appreciated more than you know and I know our family certainly appreciates it so much like um, Danny says Evelyn says oh Danny can cut your hair oh that's why Danny was laughing I heard him chuckling to himself and I'm like why is he laughing <laughs> Jody says Danny can cut it um, actually I think he'd do a pretty good job I think you did Violet's hair you trimmed Violet's hair a few times right yeah um, but actually, I think Violet prefers Danny to trim her hair as opposed to me. I'm not sure why, but um, I also wanted to let you know um, for Social Sunday next Sunday, I decided we're going to do kind of an interactive Q&A session. We did one of these uh, about two years ago. I'm going to try it again next Sunday. I thought it would be um, a, a fun thing that we can do again. I had a lot of fun last time we did it. Basically, how it'll work is I'll prepare questions. Um, nobody will know the questions ahead of time, but um, we'll post them on the screen, I'll answer them, and then everyone is welcome to answer them in the comments. I think last time we did, last time we did this two years ago, we did about 20 questions or so. So um, it's a lot of fun and a good chance to, to know more, learn more about your fellow bag makers in the comments. Whether you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, I know there's a lot of people commenting every week and I just thought it would be fun to see everyone's responses. So check for that next Sunday. Um, I guess jumping right into the notion of the week. So if you've been watching every week, um, you may recall last month my kids asked me why I wasn't reviewing or they suggested that I should review a few items that were a little bit more expensive. Not necessarily sewing machine expensive, but something more than a few dollars, which is the, the price of the notions that I normally review. So I put my thinking cap on and I tried to find things that were a little bit more um, some of them have been tools, but some of them are just cool things to have in the sewing room. And so 
I got this product called, I'll show you the box. It's called the Teeny Tiny Tank, which I thought was a really cute name. Um, I'm gonna save the box so I can store it, but the reason I purchased it is because one of its uses is to clean a sewing machine. Now, granted, this is uh, you know a little bit more expensive of a sewing machine cleaner than say like a pipe cleaner. So um, definitely pipe cleaners are the, are the way to go if you're trying to keep costs down, trying to keep things simple or not having extra things in your um, sewing room to store. However, I bought this teeny tiny tank to get um, my innards of my sewing machine clean and it's good for other things too. Um, I suppose detailing a car, cleaning your computer or your keys, um, all sorts of things and there's multiple hoses and attachments. So I'm gonna jump over to the side camera and oh, before I jump over to the side camera, I did wanna mention I had a little bit of an oopsie with my sewing machine. The, the tank cleaned out my bobbin area so well that I thought, um, I had I had this brilliant idea. Why don't we unscrew the top of the sewing machine, take it apart, and clean the insides? Because last time I had my machine service, they told me um, I had so much lint buildup um, on the inside of the mach the machine, opposite the bobbin area. So I thought I'd do that. When I tried to put the top back down, I couldn't I couldn't sew because the the hand turned crank wouldn't turn all the way. So I started freaking out. I only have. The, that's that juki here. The other machines are at the, the new house. And so I thought, what am I gonna do? I don't have a sewing machine to use. Thankfully, Danny stepped in and um, got me righted. Um, there was a little lever that needed to be aligned when I put the lid back on, but that was a, a moment, moment of freak out while I was trying to prepare for the show. Anyway, I'm gonna bring the tank over to the side camera along with all the attachments so that I can show you um, what's all included in the package. Okay, so I did want to mention that um, there's a few options for the teeny tiny tank on, I purchased this one from Amazon. If you're looking to get this to um, take care of the inside of your sewing machine, you want to make sure you get the teeny tiny tank with the tools. So the tools is all these attachments that I got um, when it came in the mail. So first off, it has two different hoses. I'm not going to plug it in and use it live on camera because it's gonna be super loud, but um, it came with this very long plug cord outlet and two different hoses. So this bigger hose is made for ha about, I'm gonna say half of the attachments that came with it. Okay, obviously an instruction book, everything comes with an instruction book. So these three big attachments are for this thick black hose. So these are just, you know, your general, similar to what my regular vacuum cleaner has, except smaller size. So this is what goes with the bigger hose. I did use um, this smaller hose attachment for cleaning the sewing machine. So it, it came with a few different, basically, adapters. Danny had to help me figure it out, to be honest, because there were so many pieces to it. Um, but it just kind of pops in right there, and then the attachments um, get put on and off over here, and you can select different ones based on what you need to be cleaning. And it also comes with this little brush attachment. But I used this angles, angled attachment to clean the bobbin area of my machine. And also, as I mentioned, when I pulled the lid off of it, when I unscrewed the lid, I used that as well. So super easy to use. I got it all the way down inside my machine to basically the bottom of the sh machine, which I really liked, even though there was a bunch of um, cords and things at the top of the machine. Um, I felt like it was pretty strong. Um, there's really only two buttons on top. This is the on and off. And then this button over here, um, if you wanna take the lint out, this part just comes off. And as you can see, th this is all the stuff just from using it really quick before the show. Um, I'm not sure if you can see, Danny's gonna zoom in it looks like. Um, but there's all the lint that it pulled out from just you know about one to two minutes of of using it. So that's kind of a lot of stuff for just, I mean, the machine looked fairly clean to me already, um, but this just pops back on and I uh, found it really easy to use. Again, um, I've linked to it on Amazon, um, maybe something to keep on your wish list for um, maybe uh, if you're looking for some cool sewing gifts for, I know Christmas is a long way away, but um, uh, might be an idea if you're looking for something to clean all of your gadgets, especially if, if you have a lot of machines and want to keep your, your uh, computer really nice and clean, um, get into cracks if you're cleaning the house, I don't know. Um, 
I have a question for you to go along with my notion of the week. What do you normally use to clean your sewing machine? So maybe you use a pipe cleaner. This is what I've used in the past. Maybe you, um, this was the case when I first, when I got my first sewing machine as an adult, maybe you don't clean it. Maybe you just leave it as is and maybe you um, let the sewing machine technician, whenever you bring it in every year and a half to two years, maybe you let him, him or her handle it. Let me know how you usually clean your sewing machine. I have a feeling there might be some um, interesting responses, so I'm gonna check that um, after the show. So I also wanted to announce the winner of the week three sew along for the day trip cell phone wallet, and that is Stephanie Cohen. So congratulations to you, Stephanie. Um, the sew along is uh, about being wrapped up, so looking forward to seeing all the finished wallets come through in the Facebook group. And I have added a bunch of various fabrics to my stash lately. I've been saving them just in case I'm not able to get, um, who knows what the situation will be as far as new fabric sh shipping to shops and what shops will be able to send out. So I've been doing my best to save fabrics just so that I have enough um, to last me a few for a few social Sundays. So I have some real good ones this week. I'm gonna jump back over to the side camera and show you what those look like. So this first fabric line, Sassy, I forgot what it was called. I listed it on my blog. Anyway, Sassier Animals, I believe it's called. Oh, yep, there it is on the salvage. Sa Sassier Animals is super, super cute. It's all animals showing their sass. They all have, uh, they're wearing their glasses. There's a cat. Let me actually open it bigger just in case I'm missing some on the other side. So there's kangaroos, ostriches, lambs, penguins, super cute. So this is the kind of the tossed print. Oops, there's there goes my wonder clips. There's also another couple prints with sort of the animals closer up. And I don't know, I guess I can't open the whole thing because I, I don't have enough room. But um, as you can see, a lot of variety of animals. The unicorn's my favorite. Be yourself unless being um, unless being a unicorn becomes an option. Thought that one was super cute. Um, let me pull some of these from the bottom too. So like all the animals here, these would be really cute pan little panels to use for zipper pouches, pin cushions. Um, I, I just think the animals are adorable and I really love the little sayings. And here's another one except the panels are bigger in this one. <coughs> Love that one. That's cute. So all the an there's a ton of animals represented. I think we'd be here for a while if I showed all of them to you. But again, they're all cute animals wearing glasses. Um, they have funny sayings. And I think the fabric is really great. I love the bright colors. Okay, next one is just a single print that I picked up. But this is from Timeless Treasures. And my dad's into motorcycles. So I picked this one up because I thought... <clears throat> I could make him something interesting with this fabric. I like that it's black and white and just, you know, a plain fabric. And then the third set of fabrics is, um, I'm gonna, again, I'm going to have to check the salvage. Uh, Library of Rarities. Okay, so this first print is a matte print. I really love neutral style matte prints. And then the other two fabrics in the the fabric line are kind of book related. Well, this is not necessarily book related. These kind of remind me of stamps. So I really like this one. I like the colors. I like that it's a neutral cream with the bright colors. And they, these are all, I guess, mostly children's books. These are all books on a bookshelf. Let me open this up so you can get a better view. I really, really love I love the colors. I like how the books all look like vintage style books and I like that they're sitting on a bookshelf. So this one's really, really cool. I like this one a lot. I'll probably use this one as an exterior and then maybe the butterfly is the lining or the matte print would be great as the lining too. So those are the new fabrics that I've added to my stash. If you're interested in either purchasing or finding out more, maybe adding them to an inspiration board or a wish list. I've linked to all the fabrics in the description so that you can check them out um, after the show or, or whenever you feel like it. So to go along with that last line of book related fabrics, um, what's your favorite book? Um, maybe it's uh, fiction, maybe you like reading nonfiction, 
Let me know in the comments what your favorite book is. Growing up when I was a kid, of course I like horses. I liked the Black Stallion books and I also liked, I loved, books written by, <clears throat> the author's name is James Harriet, and he was a country vet in England and he wrote um, really, really thick books about his life as a vet, seeing his clients and as a kid, I got those books for Christmas one year, they were the best and I would read them over and over and over. So um, let me know in the comments what your favorite book is. Um, I, I think I mentioned last Sunday that I was trying some new things out since we were home all day. Um, I made bread for the first time, I made these dinner rolls. The first night that I made them, I, I had one and it was okay, but it was a little bit denser than I would have looked, liked. I was in, envisioning more of a fluffier, fluffier style of dinner roll, so I think it was just user error because in the description of the recipe it said that they were supposed to be light and fluffy. Um, I would like to try bread again now that I have some active dry yeast. I do not have a bread machine, however, so if anyone has a tried and true bread recipe that you can make without having a bread machine, um, let me know or maybe even email me. My email is sarah at soulsweetness.com and that's sarah with no H. I'm anxious to try baking another loaf of bread. The dinner rolls that I made were really involved. I had to I had to do all these uh, um, letting I don't know letting them sit processes. Um, I had to let the the dough sit for two hours. I had to do something else, let it sit for another hour and a half, do something else, let it sit for another hour and a half, and then bake it. So I'm not opposed to do to doing anything like that, um, but I'm interested in learning more about making bread. So if you can help, uh, let me know. So Danny's favorite part of the Sunday show. We'd like to invite all of the bag makers to stand proud. Let us know that you're part of the So Sweetness squad. We really appreciate you, um, especially now. Like I really feel almost better inside knowing that. Um, that we're part of something and not alone, even though we're in our houses. And so thanks so much for being part of our community, watching the shows, commenting during the shows, um, participating in the Facebook group. We really appreciate you so much. So the book review for this week is actually two different books. I decided not to show you extensively the inside because uh, it's basically um, Inten like an intense tutorial on how to bind a quilt. So even if you're not a quilter, you might find the binding process interesting because binding can also be used for bag making, but I'm gonna show you the books. I'm just gonna show you a couple pages on the inside and just explain why I thought they, they were so useful. So again, um, these books were written by Ebony Love and I've linked to them <coughs> in the description. So if you're interested in investigating, you can find them on Ebony's website. Ebony's actually local to the Chicago area, so I've, I actually know her in person. Um, I, again, like I mentioned, I'm not going to show extensively on the inside, but um, just so that you get the gist, the books are full of step-by-step -step color photos with instructions, and the first book is 70 pages long, so 70 pages only on binding a quilt. So as you can see, it's very intensive instructions. Um, the thing that I liked about Ebony's techniques in the book and I, I really appreciated the extensive color photos as you can see there's tons of color photos all over the place um, I realized in the book which I had no idea before binding will depend on the actual quilt because of the um, the way you put the quilt together the materials you use um, some quilts you might use different types of batting um, and so the binding process really depends on the actual quilt that you're using and Ebony walks you through everything so that you can get um, really great looking um, machine stitched binding. So I know a lot of people like to um, sew their binding on by hand. I usually don't just because I just don't, I, I've decided not to make time for that. Let's just put it that way. And so Ebony's book is, um, I thought it was really brilliant and I appreciated all of the instructions. Um, I spent a whole day reading through the book and it was kind of like an aha moment. She has an optional binding tool, which is just an extra, certainly not necessary. You can certainly use your regular quilting ruler to get the same results, but I got the binding tool as well. And she also has a second book, Binding Crazy Angles. So if you're doing something that's not just a square or a rectangle, how to bind 
through different things like scallops, um, corners, um, and the same thing is included in the second book. Well, not the same thing, but the same aesthetic. So all of the step-by-step -step full color photos, all of the instructions, and as you can see, like all these crazy angles and the quilt binding looks beautiful. So um, again, I decided not to show more than that because I didn't want to give away any techniques from Ebony's books, but these are the book titles, Get It Done Now, Binding Quilt by Machine, and then Binding Crazy Angles, and then this is the, the binding tool on um, Ebony's website. So I really liked those books, um, and I'll be using the technique that Ebony showed in the book to, to bind my next quilt. All right, so, uh, my demonstration for tonight is how to, to use a string to turn handles right side out, and if you've seen the Clyde Bank tote before, that particular bag has the body of the bag which extends into the handles and then the handles are sewn and turned right sides out. Um, it can be a bit of a, um, you need a bit of a patience, a bit to have a bit of patience to turn those handles right side out. So you can use either string, um, if you have a ribbon lying around, even a shoelace, as long as you're not sewing over the plastic part of the shoelace. Anything that you have lying around the house you can use for this method so it's really quick and easy and I'm going to jump back over to the side camera and show you how to do that so I had a few scraps of the Clyde Bank tote lying around um, I'm not sure what happens why I never used it for a bag but nevertheless it was a good opportunity to t turn the fabrics that I prepared into um, a sample so I've got my lining fabric attached to interfacing. I've got my exterior fabric attached to interfacing. Um, I just wanted to give a note that um, I've sewn this a little bit different than um, the Clyde Bank tote in the pattern. In that pattern, the side panels are attached, but I think you get the idea. Um, we're sewing the handles in the same way. So I've sewn the fabrics right sides together. I sewed that together before the show started. As you can see, um, there's my fabric sewn right sides together. And then, here is my string and again like I mentioned you can use um, other materials besides I found the string in my sewing room and you can either use a safety pin um, or I'm going to be using a bodkin to get the the string through my handle and leave it along the top edge so I'm going to secure my bodkin with this little metal ring and I'm going to push it through both layers of the fabric Okay, so I'm just going to push it through until I can grab the bodkin from the other end. And then I'm going to push the string just so it's like a little bit above the edge of the fabric. And I'm going to wonder clip that in place. So as you can see by the black thread, I've already sewn the fabrics right sides together. And then I'm going to take this over to the sewing machine and then just stitch over where the, the string is just to hold it in place so that I can pull it through the handles. You'll do the same thing for the other handle. And then let me grab my second sample. I went ahead and stitched the string in place before the show. As you can see by the black thread, there's it stitched in place. I did the same thing for the other side. And then you'll just go ahead and start pulling the string through. Because I have foam interfacing on one side, you'll need to be a little bit more patient and kind of, rather than just trying to pull it through and yank it through, you kind of want to almost create sort of like a little tube for the end of the strap to go through. So I'm not sure if that makes sense, kind of like a little tunnel, just so that everything doesn't get pulled through all at once. So you'll be wiggling that with your fingers a little bit to get the tunnel going. I sort of have mine. As you can see, there's that little tunnel and the end of the strap is over here where it should be. So. You'll get that going and then as you can see it pulls through it starts to pull through a little bit easier and you just kind of want to keep working at it so that the interfacing kind of moves down and it comes out the other end rather than jamming all the fabric into a ball because that kind of makes it more difficult to turn so as you can see because i was patient and kind of made that got that tunnel started um, i was able to pull that right side out after you pull it right side out of course you don't want the the string to stay in there so you'll just use your seam ripper and rip just the seam along the top edge so that you can release the string and then proceed um, according to the pattern instructions whatever pattern that you're working on so hopefully that was helpful and again you can use any material that you have on hand 
and you can reuse the string so you can do one handle at a time and then use the string again on the the second handle so um, Hopefully that was helpful. I know there's tons of things that we have lying around the house that can make for good um, sewing tools like that string. So if you have ideas for simple things that can make sewing easier, um, let me know. And I know many of you have done that in the past. And in fact, a lot of um, things that I demonstrate on Social Sunday have been recommendations. So um, I really appreciate you. I, I love going through my inbox because I never know what kind of great suggestions you all will have for me in there. So um, again, thanks for watching and um, thanks for being part of the group. So um, we do have a giveaway. Um, we'll get to that at the end of the show. I wanted to announce uh, the winner of last week's giveaway and that is Jennifer Winhaber. I've already heard back from Jennifer and we'll be connecting her with her prize. So congratulations again to you, Jennifer. Before we get over to the giveaway, I'm going to be answering some questions live. So if you have a question for me, either a sewing related question, question about a notion or a tool or a bag making question, let me know in the comments. You can go ahead and type that in the comments right now, wherever you're watching the show, either on Facebook or YouTube. Danny's going to do his best to get as many questions to me as possible. And um, I know he's been collecting them throughout the show tonight, in fact, no? Oh, I also wanted to, to remind everyone that on April 19th at our usual social Sunday time, we'll be doing our book club discuss discussion. That's April 19th and the book club uh, selection is for The Quilter's Apprentice and i um, really excited to get um, into discussing that and I'll be posting the discussion questions soon. Um, on uh, in the Facebook group and I'll also let everyone know next Sunday about the um, discussion questions just so you have them ahead of time in case you want them. Um, Sharon says, when pulling, use a small dowel with a round tip to help with your tunnel. Oh, that's a great suggestion. Thank you so much, Sharon. Um, so like a, a wooden chopstick or some, whatever you have, again, whatever you have around the house uh, will be helpful for doing that. Um, is your online ordering still open? Yes, we are still, Danny and I are actually taking care of the order so we can, um, facilitate social distancing so our, our employee is staying home right now so the kids are helping us with the orders we are shipping out orders every single day our mailman picks them up for us just like he always has so again we are still practicing social distancing and um is there anything else i wanted to say about that um as far as i can tell from shipments that we've been getting ourselves I really haven't noticed that much of a difference in as far as delays in receiving things, you know, things that I've ordered. So um, again, uh, that's just my own observation, but uh, we are sending out orders every day. Um, Gina's asking about the black rainbow cork. We just received our, received our fabric cutter before the weekend. Um, we ordered, we needed to order a, a specific table and fabric cutter just so we can cut fabric more quickly. So we can still pack the orders and answer emails and all that, which we usually do. Um, Danny's finishing setting that up tonight. So we're going to be cutting after we finish the orders in the morning. We're going to start cutting that black with rainbow. So um, as soon as we get that cut, we will list it up on the website. If you have signed up for an out of stock notification email, you will be emailed automatically as soon as I list it back on stock. Um, Clovis wants to know if William sews. William is 13. Um, I remember when the kids were younger or much younger, they did sew a couple of small projects with me, like a zipper pouch. Um, he hasn't touched a sewing machine in a really long time, but um, he loves drawing and actually he was just drawing, making a little drawing after dinner. So um, he's really into anime and skateboarding. He, of course, the, you know, playing computer games, but that's uh, what William is into. Um, Becky says, how do you keep your cutting mat clean? Um, I think a couple years ago I did a demonstration on how to clean the cutting mat. Um, what did I use at the time? I used, I showed a little brush that I purchased on Amazon. I believe some people were suggesting or, um, rubber erasers for that. I'm trying to think what else we used. I still do use that little brush for cleaning my mat. Um, gosh, it's been so long. I don't remember what else we talked about during that cleaning demonstrations, but um, a little, I don't even remember what the brush was for originally. I think it might have been for cleaning your shoes or something like that, but that's what I use for my mat. Um, Denise says, speaking of your beautiful children, thanks to Violet for doing my order. I got a smiley face on mine. 
Yes, when Violet helps with orders, any order that Violet fulfills, she draws a little smiley face or she writes something like, uh, she has a little abbreviation for thank you so much, um, T-Y-S-M. So um, yeah, if you get an order, that was Violet. <laughs> Rebecca says, question about foam interfacing. I know you use by any soft and stable. I only have Pelon available to me. It's a quarter of an inch instead of an eighth. Will that be an issue for your patterns? Actually, no, any of the foam interfacings, whether it's made by Pelon or Bozel or the by any soft and stable, um, I found that as far as going through a sewing machine, they sew up equally as well. The difference, the difference in thickness is very minimal, but because they're actually made of foam interfacing and the foam compresses when it goes through your machine. I found that I've had um, an equally easy time sewing with all three. So the Pelon is uh, completely fine to use. Um, Denise says, have you used Woven Fuse or Woven Fuse 2 from Barb's uh, Bags Got Interfacing? And if so, which do you prefer in place of SF101? Um, I have not used Woven Fuse 2. Actually, I didn't even know about that. I have used Woven Fuse in the past. Um, let me just, for those of you who are not familiar, um, the main difference between Woven Fuse and Pelon Shape Flex is Pelon Shape Flex generally comes only 20 inches wide and the Woven Fuse is I think 45 inches wide. So I guess a little bit more possibilities as far as laying out your pieces and cutting out the interfacing since 45 inches wide is um, handier to fit different layouts of uh, cutting for cutting out your pattern pieces. I found that it worked, um, I, I would not say one worked better than the other. I thought they worked equally as well. Um, I guess I'll have to look up that Woven Fuse, that Woven Fuse 2 after the show though, because I have not used that before. Um, yeah, but any anyway, Woven Fuse is a great alternative to Shape Flex. Um, Joanne says, do you know anything about the Cricut Easy Press? Comes in several sizes. Looks like it would be good for applying SF101 to fabric. So I actually do have the Cricut Easy Press. It's, I have the, the biggest one. It's basically like an iron but square. It's like a pressing, um, Danny, do you remember when I was using it to make the shirts? Uh, yeah. What would you, is there a better way that you could use to describe it? Um, like a George Foreman grill. Oh, okay. Danny's like saying two piece of George Foreman grill that close, like the big large one. Danny's saying it's kind of like a George Foreman grill, except it's basically a square and you just push it down. I used it to make, um, I used my Cricut maker to cut some vinyl for t-shirts and I used the easy press to press the, the vinyl on the t-shirts. The, um, the reason using, for me at least, the reason using the easy press in my instance for the t-shirts was better than an iron because an iron is only so big and my easy press is, I don't even remember the size, it might have been a 15 inch by 15 inch square. And so it basically covered the whole design and I was able to press it all in one go rather than messing around with an iron. So um, I loved it. I don't have it right now in the studio because it's sitting at the new house waiting for me, but um, it's fantastic. And um, if you, especially if you, you're making a lot of t-shirts, um, definitely recommend that. Mary says, do you have um, quarter inch elastic? Um, I actually don't. I, I used up what I had to make masks and then I had another roll and I donated it to my local quilt guild. Um, if there's a need for elastic though, I can try to get some in. Maybe we can get some on the website. Um, I'll check it out because I'm not sure. I'm kind of late in the game getting the elastic so it might be all um, purchased up, but I'll see if I can get some. Shirley says, where did you come up with the name Clyde Bank for the bag, coalition bag, and where do you get your inspiration for the names? That's a great question. So in the instance of the Clyde Bank tote, that was one of our book club projects from last year. And for the book club projects, they were all free patterns to go along with the book club selection for that month. It was five books and five projects. And I chose the name for each month's project based on something in the book, generally a place in the book. So um, Clyde Bank was, I believe, the location of the Singer Sewing Machine Factory in that month's book, which was called uh, The Sewing Machine. Um, other patterns that I write, I um, a, a lot of them are either places in Chicago, street names, um, song titles, uh, Crimson and Clover, Trin Cases, that's a, you know based off of a song title. Um, and sometimes I just Google names, um, synonyms for something. So for example, right now I'm working on a pattern called, um, I don't even 
remember. Sometimes I look for words that I want to describe the bag, like a travel bag, and I might Google a synonym for a travel bag, or um, in other languages, maybe um, the name that I'm looking for in English, but in another language, that might be a possible bag pattern name. So things like that, that's kind of what I go to for uh, pattern titles. Peggy says, can you maybe show what the black rainbow cork looks like? Uh, I don't think I have any in the sewing room. No, I so I'm sorry, I don't have any in the sewing room. We do have it listed on the website though. Um, if you go to sewsweetness.com in the pattern shop, there's a tab for what's new and it should be near the top of the what's new section on the website. Rachel says, what needle do you recommend for sewing cork fabric? So almost all of the time I use a 9014 Microtex needle for sewing bags. Um, and that will also work for sewing with uh, cork or, or vinyl that I usually work with. Um, I do have a video in case you're interested on my YouTube channel, um, needles for bag making. And in that video, I discuss uh, different needles for different substrates if you're using something different than quilting cotton, which is what I often use. Um, so you might wanna check that uh, video out. But again, 9014 Microtex will work for most bag projects. Gail said, my orders from you arrived quickly. Oh, that's great to hear. Um, I don't know what else I was gonna say, sorry. <laughs> um, Kim says, does your mom help you in the studio patterns or sewing? Um, she has helped us in the past as far as, as, far as cutting fabrics for kits, uh, especially when we were selling the tulip pink fabric. My parents cut all that fabric. Um, she helped assemble kits. Um, she's helped in the past. Um, the zippers by the yard that we sell, she's helped pre-cut those because they come on like really huge 100 yard hanks and it sounds like it would be easy to get the zippers off the, the hanks um, reasonably easily, but it's actually a huge tangled mess and so um, she pre-cuts those as well. Um, when we move to the new house, maybe she can help with more things in the studio, but in our current house, we're, we're still living here. Um, it's really small in a tight area, and in, in fact, it's me and Danny are in this room, and it's uh, it's even hard to take working in this, this small room with him. So not that he's difficult to work with, just we don't have a lot of room to walk around in here. Um, Susan says, do many people use metal charms uh, to make your zipper pulls unique? Pros and cons, are jump rings the best way to connect them to the zipper pull or is there another jewelry hardware there that, that is better? So that's a great question. My friend um, Katrina Peterson has um, a, a shop on Etsy where she has um, little zipper, not zipper pulls, but little charms on lobster clasps that you can attach to your um, already existing zipper. Um, unfortunately, we are pretty much out of stock on most of the zipper pulls, the decorative zipper pulls on our website. I do have an order for more pulls and actually new pulls, but um, some of the designs that we have currently are heart-shaped. Um, I think I'm looking into getting some with stars, lightning bolts, and some um, various Mickey Mouse style prints, um, and so those will be coming soon. Um, if anyone has a suggestion for a, a style of zipper pull that you're really looking for that you would use a lot, Feel free to email me because we're the zipper pulls have been really popular and we're always looking to add different designs. Um, any idea on how to sharpen my old rotary blade? So I demonstrated a, um, a sharpening strip on the show uh, I think a couple months ago. With the the company that makes it is called True Cut and it's basically got uh, sharpening stones inside. So when you you drag the blade back and forth, it sharpens the blade for you. Um, I found that it's been fantastic and helpful in keeping the blades go a little bit longer. Um, other than that, uh, I just usually keep some extras in the sewing room. Ofa does make a new, a newer blade, uh, forgot the name of it. It's a blade that I use myself, but it's basically an extended life, life uh, rotary blade. Uh, if anyone recalls the name of what that blade might be, let me know, but it's made by Ofa. Diane says, I got navy cork from you and I love it. I was a non-believer before that, thank you. Oh, I'm so glad you're happy with the cork. I'm actually, I just started working on a project and I'm also using the navy cork, so it's really great. Uh, it's, it's almost kind of a great alternative to neutrals like black. I didn't quite want to use black for this particular project, but the navy really hit the spot. 
Um, Renee says, whatever happened to the bag uh, lady dude shirts that Violet was going to draw up? She's been working on some designs and actually Danny found uh, a website I think we're gonna use for uh, fulfilling of the t-shirts. We need a little bit more time on that to get the designs uh, together and digitized on the computer, but uh, we are working on it. Donna says, looking for a fabric that showcases seahorses, any thoughts? So the one that jumps to mind um, because I love Tula Pink. Tula Pink has a fabric line called Zuma and there is a print in that line with uh, seahorses in it. Um, you should probably still be able to find some of the Zuma fabrics um, maybe at your local quilt shops uh, if they have a website or on Etsy. Barbara says, I brush off my mat with a mitt called the Cotton Picker. Oh, I've seen that before too. It's kind of like a... Did you demo that? I did not demo it, but... Um, the name kind of bothered me, so that's why I didn't demonstrate it, but the material that it's made out of kind of reminds me of uh, a substrate that we used to have for fish tanks. Danny, do you know what I'm talking about? Do you remember seeing that little mitt that I had? Maybe you don't. It's no. for filters. Okay, anyway. Um, maybe I'll talk about it in future, or if I can find one that's similar, but maybe a different product name. Um, Pamela says, do you sell one inch D-rings? Uh, we do have one inch D-rings in five different finishes in our shop under the hardware section of the website. Uh, I'm not sure. I think we still have all five colors in stock. We might be out of silver. Uh, I'm not recalling, but we do normally carry five different finishes. Sarah says, I don't see where to sign up to get an alert when something is um, out of stock. So any item that's out of stock, if there's a drop down box, for example, if there are different size options like the cork, the cork is available in two different sizes, you'll need to first select the size that you're interested in from the drop down box. And after you select the size, then um, a section will pop up at the bottom of the page where you can enter your email address. So you'll just need to select the size first. Tamara says, love the email when the products are back in stock. Thank you. Oh, so glad that was helpful. We started doing that last year and I thought, um, I wish we would have done it sooner because it's been helpful not only for us, but for the customers. Um, Diana says, I use grain alcohol to clean my mats. Works great. Basically, any kind of strong drinking, clear alcohol or vodka. Oh, I hadn't heard that before. So thank you so much for suggesting it. Um, Kay says, are the frames for the pet carrier back in stock? Um, we actually have... Uh, the pet carrier frames should still be in stock. Um, the frames for the Sheffield tool bag, which are a slightly different size, we do have some on the way. They've been shipped to us already, but as you can imagine, um, shipping from overseas is taking a little bit of extra time. Um, again, we do have an out-of-stock notification uh, for the, the smaller frames for the Sheffield tool bag. So as soon as we get them back in stock, I, I think I ordered... I think I ordered 4,000 frames, so um, we'll have plenty to go around once we get those back in stock. Amy says, when you design a bag, do you use pen and paper or a software program? So I actually use, I think, three or four different soft uh, programs of software for the design process. Um, Adobe Illustrator, Adobe InDesign. I use Photoshop for editing the photos. And is there something else? Um, Adobe Acrobat for compiling all of the different segments into a single PDF. We did a video a few years ago on my design process and you can find that on the YouTube channel. I think it's titled, How I Design a Sewing Pattern. Anyway, you can find that on YouTube and I think it's about a 15 minute long video and I walk you through um, what my process looks like from start to finish to really, you know, um, from conception of sketching a bag to releasing the pattern. Um, Joanne says, would a free motion quilting glove help to clean a cutting mat? Um, I'm actually not sure. I do have a free motion glove. I haven't used it in a while, so I'm sure it's packed in a box somewhere. But um, if anyone knows the answer, feel free to chime in in the comments. Camille says, would you consider showing us how to measure for various fasteners? For example, I changed a snap to a press lock and ruined the bag. Um, that's a great question. So if I guess it depends on what type of hardware you're using. In general, for um, a press lock, I'm assuming a thumb catch. Um, a thumb catch generally goes on the bottom of a flap just because of the way uh, you need to open and close the flap. Um, I'm not sure if I've done a thumb catch video before. I'll have to check that out. If I haven't, I can do it next time on Social Sunday. I'll write myself a note. 
However, if you're substituting a magnetic snap for a twist lock, which is a little bit different, different than a thumb catch, in general, you can use the same placement in the pattern instructions and then just swap out um, the locking piece for, um, if you're putting it in the flap, uh, where you would put the magnetic snap. But um, you can always make like a little, uh, like a little prototype, which is interfacing first to check your placement or um, if it's a place on the bag that you can access from the opening in the lining, you can always assemble the bag first and then leave that opening in the lining so you can get the twist lock in. But obviously it would be easier if the piece was flat rather than in a fully finished bag. Um, Sarah said, your local quilt guild is using your one inch elastic left and right, thank you. We have donated 2,000 masks to local hospitals. Can't thank you enough. Almost impossible to find elastic right now. I'm really glad that elastic was helpful and who knew that elastic would be, um, there would be such a shortage, but I have seen a lot of mask patterns that use, uh, rather than elastic, just strips of fabric. Uh, my mom was making some with crocheted uh, strips instead. So there's, there's other things that you can use um, if you don't have elastic. That's it. Sandra says, the longer lasting Ulfa rotary blades are called endurance. Yes, endurance is uh, what I was trying to think of. Thank you so much for piping in with that. I think Danny's calling on the questions, right? I can tell by your posture. You're, you're like, all right, time to get over to the giveaway. So our giveaway this week is, I basically I totally cleared out our basement because we needed to set up the new cutting table. So we took all of our items that were in the basement over to the new house um, in several trips. But I found this really awesome quilt kit that I never made the quilt for, but I thought it would be fun to use for a giveaway. So I'm going to show you first on the front camera, and then I'll show you if it's okay with Danny on the side camera just so you could see the quilt kit up close. But it's a quilt kit called Urban Legends. So all the fabric for the quilt top, including the backing fab, not backing, the background fabric is included. The pattern's included in here, and I'll jump over to the side camera just so you can see. Uh, a little bit closer what's what's included so the fabric was designed by my friend Latifa Safir it's from her graphic fabric collection this is what the quilt looks like so it's urban legends it's all buildings really cool um, here's what some of the fabric looks like the patterns inside um, even if you're not into making a quilt maybe you're not a quilter the fabric would be great for making pouches because there's a lot of large pieces of fabric there so anyway um, it'll make an 80 inch by 80 inch quilt. That's the giveaway for this week. Um, regardless, you can either make a quilt or tons of zipper pouches. So that's the giveaway. All you have to do to be entered into the giveaway is answer my question in the comments, either on Facebook or YouTube, wherever you're watching our show. What makes you happy? So simple question. I'm looking forward to seeing lots of happy answers come through. I will choose the winner for that great giveaway prize at the end of the day this Saturday and announce the winner on next Sunday's show. So good luck to everyone. Stay safe, find some great sewing projects to work on this week, have a plan, get a lot done. Um, have a great week everyone and happy sewing. Bye-bye.